The end of Phyrexia. This is how Phyrexia ends. Rushed, contrived, convenient. This is how Phyrexia ends. Phased out of existence, denied even a proper death. This is how Phyrexia ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. Did it have to be so? A successful invasion unifying and uniforming the planes was unthinkable, for it would also mean the end of magic as we know it. But does that mean the ending that we got was the only possible solution? In my previous video I focused on the logical, canonical and writing problems that the original story had, as well as the overall lack of imagination. I don't know about you, but I think it's just elegant to have an imagination. So for this one I plan to use it in order to explore three possible endings for Phyrexia's storyline, started with my least favorite to my most favorite. Option 1. Unresolved Ending The invasion starts as planned, but ultimately fails, because of Alice Known's pride. So sure was she in her victory, so convinced that once the multiverse saw the splendor of New Phyrexia, it would bow down willingly. And even if it didn't, it wouldn't be able to resist anyway. Thus she split her forces and invaded all the planes at the same time. The inhabitants, however, had other plans, and most worlds abandoned their differences and united against the common threat in order to repel the invasion. The completed planeswalkers are killed, either by known as punishment for failing to provide victories or during the invasion itself. Meanwhile, Ren manages to destroy the Realm Breaker, therefore any Phyrexians on any conquered worlds, if any at all, became stranded there as Tezzeret no longer works with them. In time they could develop into their own thing, with their own Praetors. Conversely, the Planeswalkers could do missions to look for survivors, or pockets of resistance in the fallen worlds, maybe even reclaim some of them. Meanwhile, on New Phyrexia, a power struggle ensues after the failed invasion, and Norn is toppled and killed, most likely by Jingi Taxius, who finally has had enough of her. As the new dominant Praetor, he continues to plot further, possibly even more dangerous plans. It is also worth mentioning that in this scenario, there is no counter-invasion, and Zalfia remains phased out. All in all, the invasion fails. Phyrexians expand to a few more worlds, but are largely contained. Completed planeswalkers are killed. Zalfia remains phased out. Phyrexia remains a threat. The possibility of new stories remains. Option 2. Mostly happy ending. The invasion begins as planned, but as soon as the bulk of the forces leave, Urabrask and the remnants of Shieldred's forces launch their rebellion against Elish Norn. The Murans and the Gatewatch could assist them. In the ensuing battle, Elish Norn, Vorinclex and Jingi Taxius are defeated, and Urabras emerges as the new dominant Praetor. His first order as the new leader of New Phyrexia is to recall all armies, because false completion is against his beliefs. Urabrask makes a speech, something along the lines of Norn desire to bring perfection to mortal flesh, but it is perfection that is to be desired, for if we impress it upon them by force, we taint the great work with doubt. One starts to think, they accepted our gift, but we had to force it on them. Could we be wrong? Perhaps they have seen something that we had not. Perhaps. Maybe. What if? Slack. Slag in the metal. One must always remove the impurities when forging perfection. I tell you this, we must show the mortals our true perfection, and if they still reject it, then they can live and die in their mediocrity as they see fit. After that new Phyrexia becomes more red aligned, and from now on only completes the willing, therefore becoming a possible ally, or at the very least, a neutral world, instead of a threat. Completed planeswalkers are not cured, and are either killed during the failed invasion, or survive and assume prominent roles in New Phyrexia, possibly becoming the next Praetors. All in all, the invasion fails.
Uroblast becomes the new leader, completed planeswalkers are either killed or become the new praetors. New Phyrexia becomes either an alley or new world, and the possibility of new stories remains. Option 3. Bittersweet Ending It is said that everything that has a beginning has an end. Initially the events as we saw them in all will be one stories. The Gatewatch arrive on New Phyrexia, but their assault fails, the planetary defenses crumble and split their forces, some die, some run away, some became injured and infected. Among the last is Raska, who unwittingly calls Jace to her. Once there, he wishes to spend with her their final moments, but she eventually succumbs to Phyrexia and infects him in turn. He fends her off, briefly, and becomes invisible. For everyone. He sits still for a moment, while a battle still ensues around him. In that short pause for reflection, Jace contemplates while the oil is aggressively spreading in his veins. History does not repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Urza was devastated by his brother falling to Phyrexia, and used the Silex to stop the very first Phyrexian incursion on Dominaria. Jace in turn is devastated by the loss of his love and now faces a similar decision. Everyone who came knew the risk and still did, himself included. They would all die and probably many more on the world surrounding New Phyrexia. Jace waved their lives against the entire multiverse and found them worth nothing. What are the few compared to the many? They had to die so that ours might live. It was only logical. Blackened tears ran down his cheeks as he poured all his pain and desperation into the Silex, activating it. It was as if a sun bloomed inside New Phyrexia, instantly obliterating it along with the surrounding worlds. For me this was the best possible ending. One can argue that it is too reminiscent of the original Silex Blast but repetition in art can also serve as a frame to a storyline. In most film noir, the characters start poor but hopeful that they can escape their lives, but just doing that last bank job, or getting their hands on the stuff that dreams are made out of. But in the end, they always end up dead or in jail, having failed to escape their pitiful existence and becoming even more poorer, either losing their lives or their freedom. Here the story frames it so that the only way to defeat Phyrexia is through an ultimate sacrifice. All in all, the invasion is averted, the Gatewatch die heroically, receiving a proper send-off. There is also room for new characters and new storylines. These were my suggestions for the three possible ways that Phyrexia storyline could have ended. Which one was your favorite? Which one did you hate the most? You can let me know in the comments below. And because this will probably be my last video on Phyrexia, I'd like to end it with my favorite quote from the Phyrexian scriptures. Great Yawgmoth moves across the seas of shard and bone and rust. We exalt him in life, in death and in between.